Hi, everybody, and welcome to a Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. Coco, how are you doing tonight? Um, I'd be doing a lot better, but we decided to bring on a special guest today. So introducing Miss Autumn Rains Hart. Hey, Autumn. She's terrible. I sure fucking am. How's everybody (laughs) doing? (laughs) Yay. Are we drinking? Are we having fun? Is this a drag show? That's how I know to announce. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Are we drinking? We are drinking. We're having a great time tonight. Yeah. What are we drinking? McCormick's, I think. Ew. Ew, What in the bottom (laughs) shelf hell is that? (laughs) I've been to dive bars that won't even serve that shit. (laughs) Yay. Right? I'm drinking a Rose City vodka and uh, orange juice that doesn't come in a square can because I live in a white lady home. Oh, oh, okay. Thanks for making me feel poor. Welcome to Autumn's Caucasian Home, listeners. <laughs> Next, I'll show you the front door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. It's where you left the shoes. Nice beyond. <laughs> <laughs> this so guy. for this episode, we decided to look into a subject. We decided to, we decided to be investigative researchers. Yeah. Because the internet in Portland has been blowing up about people. Well, you know, we're all still quarantined. And when this gets released, we will still be quarantined. And people in Portland are talking about a bar known as Embers. Yeah, it's something that Coco and myself have heard a lot about since we moved here. So we wanted to get the lowdown on what Embers was all about. So that's why we have Autumn here, because that's where she got her start. So um, one of the things I want to touch on is Embers was closed when me and Donatella moved here. So we have heard a lot about it. And so we decided to talk to one of the hosts of the hosts of Embers, one of the shows there, I guess. Mm -hmm. So... Autumn, our first question for you. Um, what like what is Embers? Give a general overview of it and like how long was it around for? Like yeah. just the whole give us time. a little brief history so, of Embers. Embers was the gay Portland. It was around for 48 years. It was the highlight of every pride. It was it like it was where drag shows happened. We had drag shows from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday every single week like holidays every day like they they were open all the time they like were one of the only gay bars open that like opened at 11 o'clock in the morning all the way until 2 a.m um so yeah like it was the place to be in the past like when it right before it closed like even when i was still performing it wasn't necessarily the place to be but it was definitely like this historical place um oh like it used to have a like a line around the block every single weekend for the shows wow wow so so just to place this um so obviously dark cells was around at that time um as well so were there other drag shows so when you first started out performing there was there other drag shows that were happening outside of dark cells and embers in downtown um the superstar show has been around for i think 12 or 13 years oh okay yeah. uh but no embers has been going on since the 80s like they had had their shows they're going on and before that they used to have a show every single night of the week wow oh wow so it was the place to be for drag shows i mean aside from what they would do at the other bars um on occasion but that was where you wanted to go if you wanted to see a show on any given night correct um Yeah, so Donna, let's ask our first question. Yeah, so how did you get your start at Embers? So um, I was 18 when I first started the Embers, and um, I first started the Escape, which was the underage club that they had in Portland. So as long as you were 16 years old, you could go there. Hmm. Uh, And that was a place. It was a safe place, but it was also not the best well-known of places. And so I was really into performing and I really wanted a place to be and grow. And that just wasn't it because even if you were performing there, they would still charge you a cover, which was $10 on a Friday or 15 on a Saturday. Um, And so I performed on a Friday a couple of times. I got my first Saturday and uh, the host of the Saturday show there was impressed. And so got me in contact with the uh, Thursday person at uh, Ember's who at that time was uh, on Alicious Mercury, who graciously accepted me to uh, do a show there. 
Um, and so, um, let me see, I can probably find a date because I have a terrible, terrible, terrible picture on my Instagram <laughs> at Autumn Rain's Heart from that date. But no, I went, I did two numbers. I know one of my numbers that night was Walk of Shame by Pink and the other I don't recall. <laughs> Wait, so how long had you been performing in drag before this Embers thing happened? So I had been performing, uh, like, at my house specifically from 15 to 18. <laughs> my mirrors got tired of seeing me. <laughs> and so they they pushed me out the door. Yeah. Um, and so I performed at The Escape, I believe, two or three times uh, on a Friday and then one time on a Saturday. I had start working, started working at uh, Numbers. Oh, she's so and cute. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I think I'm here. Okay, cool. So the first time I performed at Embers was uh, in December of 2014. Mm. Wow. And the uh, Wednesday night person at that time, who is uh, Crystal and Benoit, who is uh, an angel in my eyes, uh, she said you absolutely need to come back you need to do my night uh and then uh Anna was also like you need to come back you need to do my night and so then I was a guest spot so I would perform uh one or two numbers on a Wednesday Thursday I was still living in Vancouver at that time and so I would um I would ride the max all the way down in drag terrible drag mind you <laughs> and then uh, do the show and then hopefully make it back to Delta Park so my roommate could come pick me up. But sometimes my roommate would have to come pick me up from downtown, um, all in drag the entire time, looking terrible and, and busted and like everybody does. And <laughs> that's how it was for a few years. And then I just kept getting more. As I kept going, I kept getting more and more notoriety. People changed out. Uh, I don't, that time was kind of rough. I, it was a while ago, so I don't really remember. But at some point, Honeybee who is now my drag mother, moved in, and she was the Thursday night, and um, Crystal got moved to Fridays, and then someone else got Wednesdays, and I don't recall, and I'm sorry to whoever that is, but I don't recall who that was at the time. <laughs> um, so I was doing Wednesday, Thursdays, and then I started also doing Saturdays, who is uh, Onyx Lynn Valentine, who is also someone that really inspired me when I first started, and who, like, really inspired me to be better because she was the youngest uh, first lady and a first lady is someone on a Saturday, which was a, like, Embrace didn't have a lot of patrons. And so like Friday, Saturday, were re and so like anyone that hosted on Saturday was a big deal, especially to like little old beginner me. And uh, so like having her encouragement, she like offered to like help me like learn how to do makeup better and all these things. And so like she really, was and is like an icon to me and like someone that very much helped me start doing what I was doing. That's awesome. Oh, that's really great. Seriously, yeah. so when, when you said doing, did you mean performing or hosting? I was performing at that point. I had no, nobody would let me host at that point because <laughs> I wasn't even good at makeup. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is 2014. We will post a glow up picture. Of, so you said you had a picture on your Instagram. Oh, yeah. dude, if you post that, it will literally kill you. I will find so you. We will find it. it. We will <laughs> find it. So we'll post that picture and then what Autumn looks like now um, <laughs> as kind of like a glow up. Um, oh, frame you. of reference for our listeners. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? Our okay. So that was, that was you performing in other people's shows. So when did you get your own show at Embers? So, like, even at that point, I wasn't even a, like, cast member. I was still just a special guest that showed up all the time. Like, they, yeah. I was herpes. They couldn't get rid of me. <laughs> so then, um, let's, yeah, let's talk about your trajectory then. So, how did everything Oh, so there was a performer, I'm sure y'all have heard, uh, Edie DePorter, who, uh, I don't re even remember her full drag name, but she was performing, and uh, she is the, the trans Republican of Portland that uh, ah. <laughs> that thinks that CC's fired her. Uh, look it up. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, she was on Honey's Night on Thursday and she didn't show up one time. And I was like, I could turn in a fifth number if you'd like. And Honey was like, well, I have all my, e like, my music emailed to me, but if it doesn't happen again, send a fifth number. And so I did the next time and she didn't show up again. And so then I was in. 
And so at that point, I was a cast member on Thursdays. And cool. so like, that's where it started. And then nice. I also got Wednesdays and then I got Saturdays. It took a very long time for Fridays because Crystal Lynn uh, enjoyed, uh, like enjoyed having like an, an all adult, cause I was still 18 at this time, mm-hmm. having like an all adult uh, cast. Cause if you were under 18, you couldn't leave the stage. You were stuck to the basement, backstage and the stage. Hmm. Well, so um, just real quick, what was the dressing room like there? Was it a closet like we're all used to or? So the backstage (laughs) area was a bunch of lockers and go down these rickety ass stairs. And if you didn't fall down them, you weren't a real Embers girl. (laughs) Onyx Lynn, the Saturday Night Star, uh, she done fell down them one time and knocked all the lockers over that were downstairs. Like that's a cool part about this bar is that if you were on cast there, you had your own locker, so you could keep your shit there. Oh, that's really cool. That's cool. Did you I was like... notorious for having my shit falling out of my locker because, as you both know, I got a lot of shit. So did you have, your, like, stations to get ready while you were there as well? No, it's first come, first serve, and I always got there first, so I got the good station. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Okay, um, so... No, so, it start, so there's, like, this big main area where there's the good mirror, where the good station is. There's some lockers on the side. There's some lockers on the other side. And there's the shit-ass bathroom that smells and reeks. And that's just how it is. And then so, like, you have to duck down because there's, like, pipes and shit. And then you go back and there's the the back corner. And then there was a few more. There was a bunch of lockers around, like, the side. And then there was a makeup station that went straight back down. And there was what we called the pig trough, which is where if you didn't like what you had or you just want to get rid of it, it was just there and it was free. Oh, oh that's kind of cool. That's, that's a neat idea. Um, wow, I never heard that before. Okay, so yeah, back to so when was it that you ended up getting your own show there? Oh, okay. Um, so it was a long time after. Okay. For a frame of reference, our listeners are also trying to get their own show because we have a lot of new entertainers starting out. Um, so I want to know from when you started performing as a guest there to um, how long did it take for you to get your own show? And then kind of explain a little bit about what the show structure was like. So the shows were old school. So we would tell them we started at 9.30 and we would either go until 11 o'clock or 1.30. And so we guaranteed that time. So we went until those times. Audience or not. Oh. So even if there was nobody there, you didn't... I mean, Correct. You still we would didn't. pull wig heads out of the basement and put them on the tables in the front row. We would perform for the wig heads. Oh, wow. I thought that that was always just something that you joked about. I didn't know that was literal. That literally happened <laughs> on multiple occasions. On multiple um, occasions. Wow. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, Embers in his was not the most popular of places. Like, the drag queens would go, the old gays would go, uh, the people that wanted to play the lotto in the back would go, and then on the weekends, the bridal parties would go. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't, like, the it place to be. But the shows... Uh, if you were on cast, you did like six numbers. That's a lot of numbers for so for our listeners for the new for the new queens. Let's let you know, queens and kings is normally a drag show is roughly about an hour and a half. Yeah, and like, like three tops. numbers at the very most. At the very most, I guess our shows back in Grand Junction. I guess the <laughs> most I was doing during that, I would do probably all together about like six or seven numbers if we had group numbers. But if it was just a regular show three, maybe four. Yeah. With an intro. Oh. And if you were the host, you did double. That's a lot of performances. Wow. So yeah. it would go, typically, it would go host, co-host, host, person, 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 and then there would be six sets. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. And so you were doing these shows, and you were doing them without getting a guaranteed payout, right? No. So if you were on cast... You made fifteen dollars. Okay. If you were a host, you started at minimum wage and then moved out to wherever you ended up being. I don't know any of that. All right. Huh. That's that's very minuscule for um, that much. That's a of lot of performance. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, if you yeah. were a guest, you got nothing. You got tips. If oh, uh, hunty. Yeah. Wow. How many? Wait. How many performance spots did the guests get? Did they still? Two do? or three. One, two, or three, depending on how new, how good, and how reputable you were. So kind of similar to the shows that we see around here today. Okay, that yeah. makes more sense. 
if you're the first time, I would probably, because uh, Wednesday, Thursday, especially Wednesday, were like new person nights. Okay. So like, if you were new, I'd probably give you two, because like you could fuck up one and you could do good on another. <laughs> mm-hmm. Gosh. Just okay. to give you like enough versatility to do like well ones. No, that makes and sense. that would give me a base of reference. Um, and then like, uh, if you were like someone in the community and you wanted to do the show, you'd get three, especially on a weekend, two or three. Okay. It just depended on how the host felt and like how many people were in the show, especially how many people were in the show, especially on the weekends, because they could get full. Okay. Well, here's a good question. Why did they ask you to be a host? That's really good for our listeners too. So, um, there were a lot of changes that, ha- I think I mentioned this before, there were a lot of changes that happened. Honeybee went to like a different night and then Anastasia took a night and then unfortunately no one showed up on her cast one night and so unfortunately she was let go because it didn't seem like she could hold a cast. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I love her dearly. I was literally the only person that was there that night so we each did back-to-back numbers in six sets. So we each did 12 numbers and the show director was literally like, choose a jacket so you can change the number. Change for your next number. Wow. Wow. So you, um, so it was it was very much so a requirement because you did have a show director there that was kind of overseeing things. Yes, we had Robert Thomas, who was my my favorite old angry person. <laughs> favorite old angry person. That I love like him. Director. No, he's great. Um, he even after Ember's closed and everything, he went on to like uh, do all the sound for Honeybee's show that she had at Harvey's uh, Comedy Club for that short period of time before they fucked her over. Um. Which is before y'all moved here. It was great. Love that. Oh. Um, but I digress. Then, so I moved to Thursdays. My uh, drag sister, Athena, who now lives in LA. I don't know if she does drag anymore. But uh, she got Wednesdays. And it didn't end up being as successful as everyone wanted it to. And so then after she was dropped, I was like, hi, I'm here. I would love to. I've been telling you I would love to for a while. But I was only 20, and so they were hesitant because underage. Uh, But I was given a a spot, and I killed the audition. And so then, at that point, I was given the Wednesday night show, uh, which I dubbed Make It Rain, because obviously that's my name, and that's fun. Oh, that's Um, fun. uh, So I had Make It Rain on Wednesdays for a while. It was a good long while. Um, And then... Uh, Crystal Lynn, who is Empress 50 of Portland in the Rose Court, and who is an angel. I love her so very dearly. Uh, she ended up retiring because she she wanted to, and she'd been doing it for a very long time. She had been a first lady, which means she hosted a Saturday night for a very long time. Uh, then she moved around. She had been doing it for a very, very long time and was, like, well-loved, very esteemed. She's amazing. Um, she uh, ended up retiring, and so then Honey got Fridays, and I got moved up to Thursdays, uh, at which point then uh, Carly J. Phoenix actually got the Wednesday night spot for a while there. Okay. Oh, cool. I thought... And I so then my Thursday night show, which I called Pumpkin Spice and Everything Nice, happened. Oh, that's a really adorable name for a 20-year-old. Oh, such a white girl name. <laughs> it is such a white girl. Powerpuff Girls! Oh, oh, that makes sense. It's reeking with privilege is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Are white people the only people that have Cartoon Network? Uh, <laughs> no, but they're usually the only ones that order pumpkin spice. You'll see that come fall as a barista. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, the, the, uh, the Parf Girls, sugar and spice and everything nice. My name is Autumn, and so it's pumpkin spice and everything nice. Okay. Oh, makes sense. I got it. I got it. So we have Maybe two that's more why questions for you for this part of our episode. And just for our listeners to know, this is going to be a two-part series on Embers released in a regular episode and a bonus episode that'll be coming out a few days after this one. Um, so the next question we want to know, really for our listeners and truly for um the portland scene because they've been talking about it uh what um what was the culture like there yeah and we want to know i know we kind of touched on how long it was around and why it was a very like iconic venue because 48 years is a long time to be around so but why is it that anytime we go anywhere we can't 
why is it that we can't go anywhere without hearing about embers as newcomers? So are you asking the about the culture of the bar or the culture of the kiddie pool full of sewage in the basement? <laughs> well, I think more specifically the bar, but I mean, the kiddie pool uh, comes like it adds to the culture of the bar. <laughs> oh, no, it smelled in the summer. That's about it. Oh, okay. um, uh, no, so the culture of the bar, it was, it, it was the historical place. It was definitely like where all the drag queens would go on their rounds about like a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. um, I I definitely would run into more than a few that of like the popular girls now at this point. Like a lot of the like the court queens would come out even if they wouldn't go anywhere else. They would come there. Like I ran into Shima and Kimberly and Malibu more than a few times. Uh, they would come there on their way to other bars. Um, it was just, like, the place to be for, especially, like, bridal parties. It was, like, it was very much, like, the, the, like, drag scene, in quotes, of Portland, where, like, all the straight people would go. It was, it was the straight gay bar. Oh. Huh. Okay. Sense. Do you think that culture can ever be recreated at another bar? No, because no other bar has the history. Yeah. 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 And then, because of Darcel's having stadium seating... Um, it's not a walk around chit chatty. Yeah, no, because Embers had the stage room where we had the stage bar. Yeah, the show show bar as they call it. Sorry, and then they had the back bar, which was the same size but huge and a giant dance floor. And in the eighties, they had a whole second floor up on top that had a full like thirty foot runway that some of the hosts there had learned how fast to walk, so their train on their dress and like their capelets would float as they would walk fast along it. Wow. Good. But the fire could shut that shit down. Sounds kind of iconic. It does sound kind of iconic. I had only ever been there in that second floor once the bar had closed itself because it was very much closed for a very long time. Hmm. Huh. So our last question for this part of the series is, um, let's talk about what Pride was like there. So... During Pride, if you guys have been in Portland, you know that it starts on Burnside and then cuts down Broadway and then goes down to Davis, goes by CC's, and then goes all the way down to NATO and goes over to the festival. Well, we used to have Embers on the corner of Broadway and Cooch. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> for a second there. Max in the heart. Um but uh yeah no it would go down uh past embers and so we would have the wonderful the talented the beautiful uh she actually was a host there at one point in time maria peters lake and she would host the shows that or she would host the pride there and it would be everything like she would sit on a, like on like a stadium seating and she would announce everything as it goes by and we would have a show that starts exactly as soon as the parade is done which means you would get in drag, do the parade, run to Embers, and get ready, because it was a packed house. It was one, like, especially when I was performing, it was one of the only packed houses of the year, and to your God, was it insane. Um, but no, like, everyone would make so much money, it would start at, like, 1, one thirty, and it would go until, like, 3 or 4, and anyone who was anyone would be in that show, and it was everything. That's cool. That is really cool. So uh, that concludes our first part of the Embers slash Autumn Rain's Heart episode of A Gem of a Secret podcast. But before we completely end, we'd like to feed the positive. And my feed the positive this episode goes to Craven Valentine. Uh, he's been putting out some awesome art um, out on Facebook and on Instagram. He did a really awesome color series. So please check him out on Facebook and Instagram under Craven Valentine. Um, you can see all of his lovely work there. Fun story about him. He actually started doing drag on my stage oh, on cool. the Wednesday night show at Embers, him and Brittany on. That's insane. That's really cool. That's really, that's really kind of something. So um, my um, feed the positive is gonna go out to the one and only superstar diva herself, um, Bolivia Carmichael's. Gosh, I just absolutely adore her. Um, you can look at, you can find Bolivia on Instagram at queenbolivia503. 
Uh, Bolivia is one of those people who, so Bolivia is one of the, probably the third queen I met when I visited Portland. Um, I went to CC's and she was hosting a, um, just a dance party like she does. And um, she talked to me and she was so sweet. She's super kind. She's super welcoming. Um, the thing is, the thing about Bolivia is Bolivia makes you feel like you're part of the conversation and you're a part of the party. Oh, for sure. Bolivia like makes you feel like no matter what's going on in your life, like she cares about you and she wants to listen to the things you want to talk about. Yeah. Fun story about Bolivia. Uh, when I was performing at the Embers underage, Honey would get undressed because she would be my ride home back to Vancouver. Uh, she would get out of drag and everything at CC's. So I would have to wait outside because I wasn't underage. But every time I would be there, uh, Bolivia would come outside, say hello to me, and ask how long it was until I could perform on their stage. She is the most welcoming, even when you can't even come into her bar. She just oh. exudes love. Yeah, she was my welcome into the city as far as like drag went and really was like, we need to get you booked and was like so kind. Um, because we do have Autumn Rain's heart here on the podcast, she's also going to do a Feed the Positive. So Autumn, who would you like to bring up? I would like to feed Honey Bee Heart because A, she's my mother and B, she's literally doing the mostest and the bestest and singing to everybody during this quarantine she is on her Facebook uh, doing lives three times a week, just, or it's like two or three times a week, just to make sure that everybody is staying entertained. You can find her on the Instagram, PDX. She is the evil queen of Portland, and she took a chance on me when no one, like, she, like, is the first person that actually gave me a spot here to, like, be on cast, and she's the one that really really gave me my start and I love her very dearly awesome well that concludes this episode of a gem of a secret podcast my name is Donatella my secrets my name is Coco gem holiday and I'm autumn rain's heart thanks everyone for tuning in we will see you next Thursday bye